What is up, everybody? Welcome back to RacingDudes.com and welcome back to Rockets, Hits, and Heartbreaks. I took a couple of weeks off from doing the videos here. Had a lot going on with the website, a lot going on trying to cover stakes action and, and Kentucky Derby action uh, from coast to coast. So kind of a slower week this week, so we'll get back into it. We'll go for a freebie this week. We'll go for a free uh, uh, early pick five at Gulf Street Park on Wednesday this week instead of kind of looking back and kind of go through that and go through a freebie and, and see if we can get a win home in this one. Last time we did a free pick five on this show, we went four out of five. Well, we did miss uh, the last leg, I think, knocked us out of that pick five. So hopefully that does not happen today. Let's do it. Let's go through a free one here. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Let me take my banner away. We'll put up the races uh, if I get the right button there. You don't want that one. Uh, put up the screen. Okay. Let's do it. Let's go to Gulfstream Park. Let's go to the early pick five, like I said, on Wednesday here at Gulfstream. It's going to be a pretty good one. We've got a $90 ticket up on the screen there going five by two by two by three by three. We're going to start off race one. I've got it up on the screen, like I said, $35,000 claimers in this one going five furlongs on the turf. A field of nine, and I went deep in this first spot to try to get through this first leg. I thought this was the most competitive race on the sequence, clearly, as I went five deep. We'll go through them now. I did use number one, Charles Chrome. By the way, no morning line odds up on Equibase right now as I do this, but there are morning line out. So I'll read the morning lines as we go through. The number one, Charles Chrome, is one I use. Three to one on the morning line. That is going to be the favorite. Coming first off the claim here, Javier Castellano gets aboard. Dropping down from the starter allowance ranks last time out down to the claiming ranks today. Last time out against claimers at this level, 35K, that was two back. Got second by a nose going a mile. Now we're going five furlongs. Still think the source in the class drop was interesting. The number four horse, I also used elusive mischief. Horse was um, second last time out in a dead heat, only beaten a length and a half. Same kind of race as, as what we're seeing here. Um, so thought this horse was interesting to play right back here. Uh, Jose Ortiz gets aboard for the third straight time. So the number four elusive mischief, seven to two on the morning line. Uh, and a horse I used in here as well. The five, uh, also Solrality, Solrality is another horse that uh, I used in here. Why? He was the one that dead heated with the four uh, last time out in that 35K claiming race going five furlongs. So the five, another one gonna be on the ticket here, eight to one for the five. So that was very interesting. The five at eight to one and the four at seven to two, both horses, we're in a dead heat last time out for second at this level, so I don't know how those odds make a ton of sense. Also, another thing to like about the five, gets out in front. He's drawn inside of all the other speed. He should be your pace setter. When five furlongs on the turf sometimes, that can be tough to beat at Gulfstream Park. So I had to get the five involved as well. Let's keep it going to the seven silent flash. That's the next source used on the ticket here as we went five deep. And with silent flash, uh, first of all, should should mention the horse is nine to two on the morning line. This horse is running second off a layoff today, and I think that's going to be very good. Last time out was in that same race as the four and the five, finished fifth, beaten two and three quarters. Second off the layoff here, and instead of Luis Saez, now we have Irad Ortiz Jr. So pretty much one good jockey to another. I think the horse will move forward here. Drexler, pretty good trainer at this level at Gulfstream, so decided to use the seven silent flash as well. Finally, last one on the ticket was the eight discreet tune. We'll see what this horse does moving back to the turf after trying two races on the synthetic surface. Uh, you know, over the synthetic, wasn't too bad, but not great. Got beat uh, two links, two, two races back, got, but got beat three and a half links last time out. Couple of positives, those were in starter allowance company and the turf races do look better than, than the synthetic races for discrete tune. Also, this will be the second race off the layoff for discrete tune as well. So a lot of positives uh, when you're looking at this. Also, Luis Saez jumps over to the eight here instead of the seven. He rides for David a lot and Carlos David and Saez usually do pretty well together. So I think the class drop as, and, and also the surface change is really going to help the eight discrete tune four to one on the morning line for discrete tune. So one, four, five, seven, eight for leg one of this thing as we kick it off. One, four, five, seven, eight. Going to try to go deep in, in this first leg. 
really believe this is a very competitive first leg. All right, let's go to the second leg on the card here. Maiden claiming $35,000 uh, here for, for Maiden three-year-old Phillies going seven furlongs in this spot here. Field of eight, we went too deep in this spot with just the one and the four. Let's talk about it now. The one, Princess Tinko, uh, a first-time starter with Irad Ortiz Jr. aboard. He rides a lot for this barn, usually does very well. This barn hits 20% with first-time starters. Actually had a nice workout coming into this. I'm not a huge workout guy, but pretty sharp work. Uh, the last one coming into this went four th furlongs and 48 and three-fifths. 35K maiden claimers here, not a lot to look at out of the horses that have already started. I think the one makes a lot of sense as a first time starter here. This is definitely a race a first time starter can win. Uh, the other one I'm gonna use in here is the number four, good, better, best. By the way, the one is the morning line favorite at five to two. The four, good, better, best is seven to two in this spot. And look, it's pretty simple why you're going to use this horse. A couple of reasons. Number one, you're going to get out to the lead, it looks like, with the number four, good, better, best. He's drawn inside, or she is drawn inside of the other speed horse, the six. So I think the four gets the lead. Got beat a nose against similar company at Tampa last time out. Got beat a head against similar company two races back at Churchill Downs. Very competitive. Draws a very weak field in here. If that first time starter, the one, or if you are like first time starters, maybe the two as well. If neither one of them show up to run their best race, the four could take this thing gate to wire. So definitely like the four in this spot here. All right, let's go to the third leg of this one. Um, as we're gonna go too deep once again here, the third leg, a claiming race, $35,000, uh, going a mile and 70 yards here on the all weather track, the synthetic track. Um, a field of seven here. We went too deep with the one and the six. Let's start off with the one here. The one is, I believe, in magic. Uh, this was two to one on the morning line. Coming out of three straight, or excuse me, five straight allowance races, three straight here over the synthetic surface at Gulfstream Park. Now we're dropping down to the 35K level, and we're getting Irad Ortiz Jr. aboard. That seems like a theme we've talked about in these last, uh, the first three races here at Gulfstream. So... The number one I believe in Magic, I think will be pretty tough in this spot. Has speed, on the rail, dropping down in class. Look for him to try, to, or look for her, I should say, to try to take this field gate to wire today. Um, with the class drop, a lot of times when they've got that early speed off that class drop, I'm going all day with that horse on top. So, especially when they pick up a pilot like Irad Ortiz Jr. So the one for me, a horse that's going to be pretty tough to beat in this spot. The other horse used was the six, built different. Four to one on the morning line for the six, D'Angelo and Jose Ortiz. So I've used the Ortiz brothers in this spot. Um, look, Brandon Starter Allowance Company two races back at uh, over the surface against Tougher. Didn't run very well. Dropped down to this claiming level last time out, but over the turf, nearly won. Only got beat a length. I just feel like the class drop is gonna make a big difference here. We have races other than uh, the, the one two back over the synthetic surface that look pretty decent, look good enough here. So on the class drop, back to the synthetic, we'll see what happens here. I like that Jose Ortiz has stayed aboard. I thought the six built different is one you better include on the tickets. So we went one six there in the third leg. All right, let's go to leg four here at Gulfstream Park as we quickly go through this Wednesday early portion of the card. Uh, 62 five claiming uh, horses here going seven furlongs on the dirt, another field of eight. And as kind of the theme, you're not seeing just real strong runners uh, in this race or in these in these sequences. It's kind of a lower, uh, lower class of horse running Wednesday at Gulfstream here in these early sequences, or early races. But We'll go three deep here. We'll go through them. Two, three, and five is who we're going to use. We'll go to the number two first, Moped Dennis. Seven to two on the morning line here, taking a big drop in class. Last time out was fourth, beating six and a quarter, going against 12K claiming company here on the dirt. I think the drop down to the six, five level is going to make Moped Dennis pretty tough in this spot. Luis Saez was aboard that day. He jumps aboard again today. I thought that was a pretty good sign. So the two Moped Dennis certainly seems like to be a horse that should fire off of the class drop. The number three major king is another horse I'm gonna use in the spot. 
Similar drop in class, been running at the 12K level and not doing very well. So looks like a drop in class is what needed to happen. Big change here though, we're going to go to the dirt over the turf, or over, excuse me, over the synthetic in this spot. Been, he has been running in synthetic. Now we're gonna drop over to the dirt here. Big drop in class, surface change. We're trying things out. S Jr., not a bad trainer. He's a guy that you know can win with horses at this level. Um, gets Vasquez award. I don't think that's a terrible move either. I think the three major king could have something to say in this spot. I kind of look for him to try to get rushed out of the gate and get ahead from this inside post. The three major king is one I thought we better put on the ticket. 10 to 1 in the morning line, and you're getting that price because he's been running on synthetics. I'm sure people are very skeptical of the dirt. <laughs> Pedigree says dirt should be just fine. So we'll see if the three can take it to the surface. If he does, he's going to be worth every bit of that 10 to 1. Finally, the number five, <clears throat> Drum and Drummer, will be the last horse on the ticket today uh, for the uh, for the fourth race, I should say, fourth leg of the sequence. Last time out, dropped down to this level, ran pretty good, ran second, beaten six and a half. That was the first start on the dirt for a while. It had four straight races over the synthetic. Pretty good race. Uh, horse should kind of move forward off of that race. Second time on the dirt in a row here. Biggest factor of all factors, Irad Ortiz Jr. jumps aboard this horse. He hardly ever rides for this barn only once, and that was with this horse two races back. So Irad jumps aboard to get the jockey upgrade. Second time on the dirt, this horse should move forward. Thought the five was one you needed to put on the ticket. All right, let's go to the final leg of this one, race five. It'll be the final leg of this early uh, sequence here at Gulfstream Park on Wednesday. Uh, it, it's a it's a full field or almost a full field of 11 runners here. Um, and we're going a mile and a 16th on the turf. Uh, so interesting, we get to the turf at 20K claiming level here for these horses. Uh, we're gonna go three deep. This is the one, honestly, I'm most worried about getting through, but end of the day, just felt confident enough to only go three deep in here with the two, the eight, and the 10. Um, we'll see what happens in this one. This is gonna get very interesting. So let's start with French Frank. He is, uh, the, she I should say, is the morning line favorite here at five to two. French Frank is a horse that, if you watch our daily shows that we do, we've talked about her a few times and Papa Dude actually picked this horse two races back at this level and at this distance to win and she got the job done. She, she ran for Mark Cassie that day, was claimed out of that race, ran right back at the same level, that third beaten three and a quarter. Claimed again out of that race, now to the D'Angelo barn, that man again, Irad Ortiz Jr. jumps aboard in this spot. D'Angelo, Ortiz Jr., really good combination. First off the claim for D'Angelo, pretty good numbers there. French Frank, I think this horse will be pretty tough in this spot. One of the big reasons why I thought we could go three deep is we do have a lot of trust in this horse. Another horse we trust and is on the ticket is the number eight spectacular gal. This horse taking a uh, drop in class after running at the 35K level twice in a row here at this track and at this distance. Finished second, only beaten three quarters of the length, two races back. Struggled a bit last time out, fourth beaten two and three quarters. So we'll see what happens with the class drop here for this horse. I think that's what we need to see from her. I think she's going to be pretty competitive in this group today. Nine to five on the morning line. That's the bad news. Not much of a price there, but probably shouldn't be for this class trapper. Finally, the number 10 golden voice will be the last one we use on the ticket today as we try to get through this. We do get a price on the 10 golden voice, 12 to one on the morning line. And it's another one taking the same drop in class as the eight spectacular gal. Um, look, didn't run very well two races back, improved significantly, even though did not hit the board last time out. I thought ran an improved race. Now we're going third off the claim for Walder. Tyler Gaffleone rode last time, gonna stay aboard this time. Big drop down in class. And the biggest thing for me, I really believe the 10 uh, Golden Voice is going to make the front today. I think they're gonna rush this horse out of the gate from this outside post. If she makes the front, dropping down in class, I give this shot, or I give this horse, I should say, a shot at taking him gate to wire here. Got to outbreak the eight, got to get out to the front. I believe she can do it. If she does, she might be able to hold on 
and get a, a and get the win here at a big price and make this thing pay a little bit more uh, with the 12 to 1 coming in. So the 10 golden voice last horse there in this race at uh, 12 to 1 made the ticket. All right. So let's recap this thing uh, for Gulfstream Park Wednesday, uh, uh, March 8th, if I can say it, March 8th, uh, we're going one, four, five, seven, eight to kick this off here. Five horses to kick it off in a very wide open claiming race. Then we're going to go one, four in leg two, one, six in leg three, two, three and five in leg four, and then round it out with two, eight and 10 in leg five. That is a $90 ticket for 50 cents. Um, we'll see. I, I'm fairly confident if we can get through that first leg, we're going to get to those fourth and fifth legs with a shot. I think you can go short in legs two and three and get through. So there it is. We'll see. $90 ticket there. That will be the Wednesday, the Wednesday rocket play for the early pick five at Gulfstream Park. Hey, the last pick five at Gulfstream Park that was an early pick five was Sunday, and we hit it for $350 on a $96 ticket. So we're on a little bit of a roll at Gulfstream. Let's try to keep it up after uh, another tough, you know, big day at Gulfstream and Fountain of Youth Day. Uh, didn't get any home there. Did get home a few on Sunday. Let's try to keep it going into Wednesday. So that's the ticket barring changes, guys. As always, thanks everybody for watching Rockets, Hits, and Heartbreaks. We'll be back next week, and uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a free ticket again. Maybe we'll go back and look at a ticket we missed or hit. I don't know. I just like to keep it uh, keep it fresh on this show. Uh, we'll see what happens. So, all right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next week on Rockets, Hits, and Heartbreaks. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track across the country. We're ramping up for the 2023 Kentucky Derby, and we want you to join us in the fun. Subscribe to Racing Dudes' YouTube channel, like click the notification bell so you never miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.